Welcome back to Katie Bit Live Feed. Uh, once again, we're here with uh, myself and Brad, um, unfortunately on headphones, so you won't be able to hear him, but another day around the sun, another trip, another revolution of the globe, and uh, let's see where we're at. We always like to start with a t little TA. It's, it's probably not so great, but we do it anyway just for just for people. So Bitcoin down, so get in and down. I'm still defending 1.4, but kind of losing it a bit. Uh, historic outflows definitely hurting Kadena. It's the highest rate of spot selling in Kadena's history the last four or five days, causing a lot of stress because we can't can't grow, can't do much. We're trying our best. Um, I don't really know how it's going to resolve, but um, the dumping is not stopping. So. I always like to look and just show people because, you know, we get called futters when we express what's going on. It's just expressing what's going on. I mean, there's no feelings about it. You just look at the market and you say what is, right? And you look at Binance, which is the main market, and you look at Kadena and its price performance over the last 15 minutes bars. So every bar is 15 minutes. Uh, what you see here is, well, that's the USD Pair. We probably want the USDT pair. That's what most people care about. So the price is just getting hammered as per usual, which uh, causes a lot of stress for builders because, you know, with no emissions, our only principal means of hiring out is for the price to go up. You know, we all bought a sub dollar, but, you know, the price doesn't go up. And uh, you know, keep waiting for announcements from Kadena because no, really no help from Kadena. Although hopefully maybe we can strike something. But I'll just show you what's going on. When you look at a uh, cumulative volume distribution of spot selling, you see basically historic levels of selling off. And what you see here is that the market maker is eating everything. Okay, so starting from there, that's the delta here. And the delta is about 3.3 .3 million spot coins sold off just in the last 10 days alone, 3.3 .3 million. So $5 million net negative too. That's a net negative. It's cumulative volume. So that's a net negative and uh, maybe a little less maybe here. Still, millions and millions and millions of coins of outflow, and it hasn't stopped. And if you get bigger and bigger, you just see it's just down only. <laughs> it's just down, down only. It just never goes up, and so you can't you can't build in this. It's just a caustic environment to build in. There's not much we can do about it, except hope Kadena does something, because it's just Kadena, maybe. <laughs> And so there we are. That's the truth of what's going on. And so we, we, we are being called futters for saying this, but it's just, you know, reflecting on, on what's happening, you know, all throughout the, the uptrend. It's the fastest sell rate in history. This uptrend is only brought up by Bitcoin, nothing else. It's, there's no buyers. It's just Bitcoin bringing that up. And then everyone sells into Bitcoin because they have no faith in KDA to deliver anything. And it's sad because they're a good team. They are really, some of them, Mike and Carl, good guys. And don't always get along, but... You know, and then you see, you read their telegram and there's just nothing... There's nothing happening. There's... Q1 is about rebranding and focuses, and what does that mean? We don't care about that. We just care about people buying the token so that the price doesn't go to zero so that we can build things and help the price. DApps, want, DApps like KDA Bet are designed to help the price, so we want price to go up so we can at least hire two or three people rather than just stick with four forever. Now, we need help. And we can't seem to get that in the price. So for those who are looking at our recent tweets or my, my recent tweets from my personal account, 
uh, as I speak. Uh, I don't speak for Kitty about those are my personal opinions, but I just wanted to explain kind of what we're seeing and why it's so hard to build on Kadena, why there's no dApps. So I always see that. Why are there no dApps? On, well, that's why there's no dApps, because it's a constant and relentless linear dump with no, no end in sight. And then the Kadena team never builds anything that locks TBL in. So without that, the price can only go down. And you're just relying on Bitcoin to go up. So we're at all time high Bitcoin, basically. And, and that's the only thing that's dragged the price up because you can see people have been selling relentlessly into that price. You know, so from here to here, it's 14 million tokens over one, two, three, four, five, six months. So two and a half million tokens per month is just woof, woof, gone. So there you go. That's that's TA. And those are just facts. And, you know, some some people have been bugging us about the facts. And I just wanted people to know what the facts were. That's it. So that's the end of TA. On the positive side, we could just try to keep building things with our tiny team and and uh, just hope one day Kadena does something, I guess. So let's continue on with doing just that because no, nothing else we can really do. So where we left off before is we were trying to integrate uh, again in the last video live model or live data into the model making system and that was giving us a lot of trouble because there's a lot of asynchronous data that has to plug in basically so you're plugging everything in from the real world rather than a static database which you know what to expect to control right so without historical data, you have to plug into real data. Real data is messy and it has little inconsistencies and you have to handle everything. And it's like really, really a problem. So um, what we're trying to do right now is handle the most critical input, which is the lineups, right? And so kind of what we have done was we removed the call to the lineups. This is what we were doing in the last video. We were calling the lineups here. And by calling those lineups, what we were doing is we were overloading that gen server with uh, synchronous calls because the call to get the state is is an eager algorithm. It's it's uh, you know it has a timeout. It has to wait. Goes and gets the state. There might be another process trying to access the state. So there's a queue for things to happen. And if you slap it with 15, 30, 50 requests all at once just takes a little bit of time and we just don't have the time to wait. So what we did was we rejigged lineups to remove the data API call get state from our, our little function here. And then what we did was we put it to something called Erlang term storage, which is a in-memory database, which is concurrent by its nature. So you can just call you can operate on the data in Erlang term storage, which is like Redis or um, R-E-D-I-S, or there's a couple other ones out there, but Redis is a popular one, and you can you can uh, basically access that independently from the gen server that controls lineups, and the data just sits in an ephemeral state, which you can snag the data and operate on it, which is a lot nicer. So now we can do things pretty quickly, and so I'll just show you really quick. So what we're doing is we're we have fetch lineups. We go look into Erlang term storage. We look up the lineups key value object. We go and get it. If it's empty, we, we have no match. If it's not empty, we go ahead and process it. And then we can inspect it in the construct models function, which we all did last time. So we don't need to you know, say that again. I'm going to go through that again. Okay, so you can see like right away, we just need a little time for lineups to, uh, there you go, there's the lineups. So it's pretty fast now, right? Uh, the thing is, though, is that sometimes the away teams and home teams are named differently depending on where you scrape the data from. And so it's really annoying because there's no consistency in the abbreviations of the teams. And so we have a little function um, in our common library and then I'm going to go to 
So it's called Scrub Roto, where we take the abbreviation and then we change it to the abbreviation that we want to see that matches. So the MLB and, and the Roto Grinders have different abbreviation syntaxes. And so we have to navigate that and change it over, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this core.common function to basically find out where our errors are. Okay, so we have five nils that pop up. Oh, because that's, well, where's the nils popping up from? You might want to say in our little system here. Well, it's when we're enum.filtering, lineup.await team string dot down case equals game dot await. We're saying, you know, please just get the one where the abbreviations are the same out of the 15 lineups that we collect. We just want one lineup per server, right? So we go ahead and filter out the stuff that doesn't make any sense and just grab the one that we want. But if the abbreviations are different or they don't exist, it's just going to return a nil, right? And so what we want to do is we want to add in core.common, or actually no, because uh, we aliased it, common dot scrub roto. Well, I'll scrub the roto grinders data and return is maps and so so we just want to check is everything a map so is there no more nils is map just returns true or false if it's a map or not should return a map here right let's go ahead and try that so of course it's all empty maps to start with so it's all true and then we should probably no we still have some falses there right so we got to figure out what's going on here with this with this abbreviated data, right? So maybe we want to try to just take a look at what's going on. I mean, we'll, we'll just have a look. So the, this is kind of the trouble of building these types of complex systems is that you just get data incongruencies and then you have to kind of figure out what's going on. And so we just have to find out, so what's the third? Sin and sin should match. S oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. Yeah, we just got it the wrong way around. So you see SFG and SFN are not going to... That's San Fran Francisco. San Francisco Giants in San Francisco. And so we're just, I think, performing scrub on the wrong... Go ahead and see if that works. Um, so we just try to have a little look into the, the filtering and see if we can fix that. Hopefully that does a good job. Maybe not. Yeah, there it is. All true now, right? So now everything is congruous. It, perfect. That's exactly what we were trying to do. So now what we're doing is for each individual server which holds the game which holds the models for that game we now got the lineup data and now we can unlock this data here and then probably have a look at it so we want to fetch who the starter and who the batters are right that's how we make our um, our models right so that's that's what we have to do so we go ahead and See, is that broken? And uh, yeah, it's not returning anything, so we don't get any logical return here. So maybe we can just try to inspect the lineup data.away starter. 
I don't know what's going on here, but let's see if we can get that for each of the 15 processes of today's game. Am I missing something? Maybe. Maybe we just have to look at the lineups themselves and see what they are. Okay, so there are maps, in fact. And there's no, there's no nulls. Let's see how many games are up to. About 12 games, that's about right. Everything seems to match up, and so we want to go ahead and grab the away starter. Try to do something here, actually, uh, just a better but, uh, case. Just so it doesn't error out. And so if there's anything, just return whatever it is. Nothing, just return. Okay. Why is there an error there? Oh, there is none. Okay, whatever. So just a little air. Yeah, I just wonder why it's crapping out like that. It's just it doesn't make any sense. Okay, we just want to see what the that, so this doesn't like exist or something like that. So hmm. I'm getting a very weird error here. Just doesn't like that syntax for some reason? I don't know. But maybe I could try to look at the keys and see. What are the keys? Are we missing something? There's no keys, so. Yeah. All the keys are there. Could be, yeah, I think uh, if there's an error, I'm going to return an OK. We're not going to construct anything at all. Because we're waiting, because you gotta wait for the lineups, right? That's what's going on here. No, no choice. And if, in fact, we do get keys, then we can go ahead and do stuff, right? I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it makes sense to me. It's just like. Just avoids a lot of problems. Just like if we're not getting an away starter, 
what are we even doing? So there we go. Now we get the starters. And so all that was happening was we were getting an, an error. We were getting an empty map. And so there was no, there was no away starter to pull. And it just crashed on that as an error. But now you're getting all the stuff that you need. Okay. No problems. And so now we can go ahead and grab this stuff here kind of into that American freight, you can go ahead and <laughs> keep saying that really. You can go ahead and blah blah blah. You can go ahead and X and get Y. Damn Americans. Um, okay, so yeah that should work out. Gotta wait five seconds for the second iteration. Yeah there you go. So there's all the starters. Oh we do have a rogue starter there, maybe a new guy. We'll see. Um, okay, so everything works out fine. Everything's great. And now we could probably detect if there's any models built. Okay, so remember last time we did this, so I'll just briefly explain it again. We don't need that inspect there. So what we, first thing we have to do is say, okay, if we have these lineups and we get them, we should probably detect if there's any games built, right? Or sorry, if there's any models built, because we don't want to rebuild, rebuild them again and again. Just build them once and for a picture versus batter and you're done. So what we do is we go in the model registry. Remember, that's the dynamic supervisor that we set up, and we have this select query that grabs basically any key in it. And we filter that by saying, look, if there's any key in the models which has the game, game PK integer as a string in it, so we use a regular expression. That's what this little tilde R is, regular expression. That says, go find me the length. Just tell me, is it greater than zero? And so we're just looking for this, this number, and it should return zero because nothing's been built, right? So let's go ahead and see if we can get a zero out of this, or if this expression errors out, if we have a syntactical problem involved. Okay, good. So do we have a syntactical problem involved? That's what we'll find out. I should return to zero here, right? Looks like we have a syntactical problem. Great, um, because we're not getting a return. So let's go through it one line at a time. So can we even select registry models? It should just return an empty list. We have a model registry, there's nothing in it. So if we're selecting a list of keys, it should just return an empty list, right? There's nothing there. So that seems to be the problem that doesn't like the select query at all. Well, why not? Should be fine in my opinion. So if we grab that, I'm just gonna copy that and then we run this. Ah, unknown registry it doesn't know what the model registry is. So that means we got a problem. And the problem is likely in the supervisors where It's the live model registry. Mm. Yes. I just call it something different. So of course it returns an error because the registry doesn't exist, right? So that's probably going to work. Okay, so we can get rid of that there. That's probably going to work right there. So let's just test it. There's no harm in testing things. Yeah, there we go. Just empty set, right? Because there's nothing there. It's just an empty set. And so 
if we're filtering across an empty set, like so, we ought to get a zero, right? We ought to get a zero back. It's pretty simple. So 15 zeros. It's telling you there's no models on any of the gen servers. Nothing more, nothing less. It's exactly what we expect. So now what we want to do is, in the case of, we're going to grab this code that we did yesterday. It should all work now. Those are uh, Custard's famous last words, right? It should all work, crashes. It's always the way of it, isn't it? This is all auto format, so we're just trying to. There we go. So, yet again, it's the same thing we did in, in MLD Sim. There's nothing really going on here except if the number of models is zero. What we want to do is we want to go ahead into the database. See, there it is again. You want to go ahead into the database. So, <laughs> so American. And you want to get the. You want to go through each of the lineups and go and get the training data. So we have train model. It does everything we need. We've already built that, so we don't need to go look again. Build the model parameters, and then we MLB model model supervise the gen server, which handles the machine learning. OK, that's it. And so what is that? So we ought to have a look at that. And what happens is we have a secondary secondary um, dynamic supervisor called the model supervisor and it runs MLB sim dot neural network okay and so we need the neural network right we need the neural network there so we want to run MLB model dot neural network and to do that we have to go and grab the neural network code from We're going to copy by going back one to MLB sim. To lib to the neural network, and we're going to copy that to the local folder here. Okay, super. Now we don't want to overload the computer just yet. We just want to check if our um, model checking stuff works or not. Okay. So what we want to do is. Go into the lib, go into MLB sim. Uh, nope, not MLB sim. Is it model? I think it's model, right? Yeah, that's it. No, it's not. It's neural net, right? Didn't we copy neural net? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. So, sorry, we got to move the neural net into the lib folder. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and now we have our neural network, which is our old classic here, uh, using Axon or Axon, I guess. And uh, what we want to do is we don't want to initialize the model yet. Okay. So all we want to do is we want to we want to comment out the model building and just return something very simple like that. And just return an empty map. And so all we're all we're doing is setting up the gen servers here. Let's say gen servers of gen servers of gen servers, and then we're done. That's like the last thing. So great. We want to see if these models get supervised. And if they do, we want to check that we can detect the number of models. 
So it should go from 0 to 15, right? Remember, we were getting strings. So you should say, oh, no, they actually exist. So we're not recomputing them again. We just do it once, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to run that guy. And we should have a look here. So zeros. And it seems to have blown things up. Okay, that's fine. It's probably just some sort of syntactical problem here. Okay, so let's just see if we can, instead of supervising anything, just see if this code can get fired. Okay, I'm just going to I'll inspect the data out of here. Obviously, with the zeros and that's it. So there's an error there somewhere. And here, there's a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to start taking things away. sucks in these uh, asynchronous processes. You don't really get good error messaging. It's fine, though. So, so the Kadena is run now, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted to see. I'm wondering if it's in this data grab here. So for each of these guys, we are we're slamming the database to get all of this data Intact, right? So let's see, what was I doing again? Num at bats. Num at bats. 10. Wait, is that 810? No. Too. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I feel like it should be bigger than 810. Um, okay, so we'll try that again soon. And so we're just going ahead and getting the, the data here. Do we have a train model system? Yes, we do. And we just want to see if we can. Well, let's just see if we get a cadena out of there. We do not. So there is a problem with this here. Is it that we have no game dot date? I think so. Wait. Hmm. Could be that game dot date is not. Let me try something here. some kind of game some kind of game any game Let's see if I can remember one off the top of my head 
Yeah, there we go. The date is a naive date time. So we need to send in a naive date time, I think. And so let's just see what game.date is. It's a specific type. Didn't even get there. Weird. Let's see if we can just see our enumeration. Can we even see the list we're enumerating over? That'd be good. Yeah, we can see that. So we know what we're enumerating over. And then I just want to see what the game is. It's the game, it's the date that's the problem, but what is the game? Okay, and do we have a date here? We do not. We do not have a date here at all. So right because it's real time. Right, so we ought to fix that actually. Um, definitely that's a problem. Do not add a date? No, we do not add a date at all. A game time, we add. Ah, game time. This is the game time. There's no date. Okay, so there's no date there. So we need date. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add in the date here. Hey, why not? Okay, so that ought to add a date, but it's not going to be naive date time, which is what we need. It's just a different data formulation for okay that works and so there's the date you see but this needs to be transformed into a naive date time what I mean by that so let's say uh, raw date equals 2240401 maybe we want to go date time dot to naive Raw date. Is that the case? No, uh, it should be too naive, right? Uh, oh, I see. It needs a particular format. So we want to go date time dot from ISO. Is it? No, it's uh to ISO or to time. I forget how to change a date string into a date time. Let's see. Uh, just forget. Uh, can't all stay in my head anymore. Um, Eclipser date time string to naive. Oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta add in the, uh, the hours. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I forgot all about that. So if we concatenate another string to it, and I think we could use T instead of a space. Is it? And then. No. Oh, right. It. Okay, we just have to figure it out here. Um, that's what we fed it. From ISO, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> so we can go from from the ISO 8601 standard date time. Missing the offset. Is that it? No. No. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, from ISO it's 601. Naive date time. Yeah, okay. It's just using the right library. <laughs> there we go. That's all we're looking for there. That's all we're looking for there. So that's that's the right guy. So it's just the function that uh, Fetches the data needs a naive date time. It's just because that's how the database likes to compare such things. That's the data type, right? So you want to say the date equals naive date time game dot date. And then this will get fed into here. And then maybe it shouldn't error things out. I should get a bunch of cadenas back. Let's see if that happens. Yep, boom. So we get a whole bunch of... So now the problem is, is that the database is slow, right? Because we haven't indexed everything yet. And so we have to like kind of carefully go through our code and index everything so that it's light, lightning fast, right? So you can see all of the training sets are getting called. That's pretty fast. It's like a second, but we need it to be sub-second. Right? We don't want to stress the computer out at all. And so what's happening here is now we're getting all of the, so we can get rid of that, we're getting all the training data. So we're very, very close to finished product. Yeah, this is awesome. So. Very close now. Okay, and we'll leave that up there for now. And now what we want to do is just, you know, let's take some time and make our database really fast. But actually, just before I do that, I'm just excited because we're reaching the end here. Uh, I just want to see if the dynamic supervisor works. So I'm going to supervise all the models now. They're not going to compute yet, but we should see them on the dynamic supervisor. Yep. Now I should be able to look at the children. My computer's whirring. Like, uh, yeah, there, there they all are. So every game has 18 models. That's exactly what you want to see. Okay, and now I just want to Use MLB model dot model supervisor. There's all the processes. And this ought to make sense. So 252 models are created. It's very slow for some reason. Okay. 
Okay, so 252 divided by 18 is 14 games, yeah. So there ought to be 14 games today. Yep, yeah, looks about right. Yeah, so there you go. We've dynamically hosted 250 plus models in in a dynamic stack. So that's a huge progress. So you can see everything's working fine. 18 models a game because there's nine batters on each side. Two times nine is 18. So everything works. Everything is solid, except we're very slow, we're very, very slow. And I don't know why. Or is it just because they're asynchronous? Yeah, I think that's that's what's going on. They're just asynchronous. Yeah, their heartbeats are not exactly on time because they're made in a sequential order here, right? Through an enumeration, where each enumeration only ends after the training model data is selected. Yeah, okay. So great. I mean, guys, this is like, this is the same software that is made by um, Huddle. And I'm going to share this with the Kings. You know, people are like, why? Why? So the Frank, Frank Fractal. Um, I'm sorry, Rai, I'm just busy coding right now. Sorry, I'm just trying to deliver value. I don't want to get too depressed about Kadena, dude. I'm really down about it today. I looked on the telegram and there's nothing down again this week. So it's like, what's the point of even continuing on is how I felt this morning. And, and I'm just trying to get rid of that feeling by getting the job done. So we're almost done a full AI stack. So I'll have a look at your survey when, when that's done, but I just really want to, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just really, really down about things like, and it's treating us pretty bad here, us builders, and I don't think they care. At least it feels that way. We got a phone call from Carl on Friday, great, but what, what does that mean? I don't know. But uh, the good news is that our product is getting like done. This is awesome. This is so that's making me feel better. This is awesome, and. We have a, like a fully concurrent multi-game simulation engine. And just to show you guys how much that is worth, in case you think we're not building anything of value, um, Huddle for betting is a company run by my good friend, Francesco Bosanano. Um, pardon me if I'm butchering that, but Huddle has like more employees in Cadena and they build the odds feed right so we're building a, a odds feed for oracles online right we're for web3 infrastructure so we're building web3 version of huddle they got all these partners and all this news and and it's run by my good friend francesco we're connected on linkedin and uh you know they're they're making so much money so let's see how much money they raise for their software and our software is just as good as theirs they use ai as well so if you think, you know, Frank Fractal of the brothers say we're not building anything of value, we'll bring something to the table. Well, Huddle Solution provides the automated pricing of basketball, football, tennis, ice hockey, and baseball, both pre-match and in play. Well, what the hell do you think we're doing right now? We're building the exact same software, but I think in a lot, a lot better, actually, because I, I know them very well. And they're the guys from Simple Bet from New York, and I know exactly what they built. So they use Elixir just like us. They have an odds feed and that's it. We're building an odds feed Oracle and that's it. Now let's see how much Huddle's worth, my friends. Huddle raise betting. Let's see how much they raised. Can I get it? Huddle Tech has raised $15 million at, at like a $100 million valuation. All right, in 2022. That's before they even built anything. 
So don't tell me that this software is not worth anything. Are you kidding? We're building a massive software. We're going to share the value of this software with the Kings. So this is the beating heart of the sports book. And, you know, it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars with four sports. We're going to have two sports. So what does that make us, us worth? We're building something worth more value than all, anything on Kadena. It's true AI. And AI is worth money. And you're seeing why it's worth money here because it's really hard to build this stuff and to use your domain knowledge and skill to build an odds oracle. That's it. So these odds oracles make stupid amounts of money. What do you think we're building here? Value for the kings, right? So I just wanted to express that in this video. You know, these types of deals are worth like a lot of money, okay? A lot of money. You know, I guess I need to log in to see the post value and everything, but yeah, man. We want to be the Oracle for Web3. <laughs> what, what do you think we're doing here? So uh, let's carry on. Let's carry on and build that Oracle. Like it's all bullshit until that Oracle is pumping data into testnet on Kadena. Right? Demand. Demand is everything. Yeah, you understand what we're building now? Kadena won't give us like more than a call from a junior employee. Do you think we're we're here not? Do you think we're here just to play and build a Kishik Ken meme coin? No. We're here to win. And that's the difference. We're not a meme coin. Sorry, I am very down and out with the price in Kadena and it's very hard. I know the Kishik Ken here I'll show you guys. You want to see? Look how mad they got in high percent. So I'm a good relationship with Hypercent now. We fought a little bit before, but I really admire these guys quite a lot. And so I just shared my opinions on, here, I'll show you guys, on what's happening with the price because some guy was asking. And then uh, the Kishik Ken guys get us so mad. I see that you're no longer in the official Kadena Telegram. Okay, I can join that like right now if you want. I left because there's no point and it's too painful to watch them announce announcements. I don't want to be there. It's painful. It's only FUD. So I say it's only FUD because your opinion is different. Well, of course. You know. blah, blah. So this Oberlis guy who's big into Kishik Ken. I know. The, the guy rugged, right? He left. And I said it. Like Kishik rugged, right? The founder left the project. He no longer is in Kadena. And I don't blame him because Kadena's price is so bad that he can't make any money because Kadena dumps, that's it. And the miners dump and they have to dump. It's nothing against them. It's just the nature of, it's the nature of the tokenomics and without any support for the staffs, the problem is Kadena doesn't share those emissions with skilled DAP developers, right? So they think Kadena bet is some scam or joke. They like, they don't understand this. Like Car I think Carl does, like Carl is, like I told Carl the truth of what we have going on. So he knows now that we, we are serious. We're, like, we're very serious. And so like, look look what they say here. Um, so I just give Kishik a hard time because I don't like meme coins, right? Because they didn't attract any money outside the ecosystem. They just attracted money from you guys in the ecosystem and then dumped on you. And then the founder left the project. And then the founder, uh, this is the founder, Emily Smox, the ape of Kishik, I think. I think he is the founder. What is your trauma with Kishu? They raised more than you NFT, and that is not a scam. By the way, how are the Kings doing? So you see the difference between us and a Kishik Ken is with Kishik Ken, it's all about how much money they raised from you. With KDA Bet, it's about how much we can do for the community. Yeah, you damn right it is. So like I get like really frustrated when people talk about how much money they grifted from you guys. And we didn't grift any money. We didn't make a token. We took some NFT money. But that's to build some of that infrastructure up. Like it costs money to build these things. And so like we only raised sixty thousand dollars. How much did Kishu Ken raise? And then rug the project. At least he didn't so they admit that he left the project. At least he didn't take the bag like other creators. By the way, how are your kings? Are the accounts clear? I don't even know if that's an English sentence. And then this Lich King guy. So we have a lot of haters, right, who don't want us to succeed, which makes no sense because we're trying to deliver something of rational value that is proven in a proven market. 
and then they just say that I'm jealous and stuff. And then I just tell them that it's like, you know, the problem is the price and the price, if the price doesn't go up. Yeah, exactly. They don't care. They don't have a king, but I love hype. I love hypercent. They're good guys. Yeah. And they never wanted one in the first place because they were convinced that we were built, not going to build anything of value, but yeah, but jealousy, it doesn't help anything, right? Does it? It doesn't help anything. What helps something is when we build an application that balances the need for Kadena to sell tokens. Yeah, I think so. Like, but jealousy doesn't help anything. Like, I, yeah, I know, but it's a, none of that helps. There's only one way to help Kadena, and that's to balance the miners and team's needs. Right? They need to dump those tokens. Yeah, be happy when anyone succeeds, but I, I particularly don't like Kishik Ken because they dumped on people and the founder, founder rugged. March 18th, he, he rugged officially. He's no longer part of Kadena. So, you know, I did that too, though. Like, I did that too when I was doing it at Hypercent, or sorry, Hypercent at, at KDL. And uh, when I was doing that on KDL, I found out that Kadena team uh, didn't want to support us. And, like, what can we do? Like, it's so hard. And like I brought it back again when Francesco left and everything, but it's like Jesus Christ, you know, our own community r fuds itself, it rugs itself, you see, by not coming together and focusing on a singular point that Kadena. So the problem right now is Kadena LLC doesn't share its emissions, it's scared to share its emissions with anyone that can provide demand side value because we have Crank, we have KMC, we have Unit. But do any of those bring in outside money and lock it in his TVL? Hell no. Not that they're bad projects. I, th I think they're lovely people, but um, the KMC guy, I don't know too well, but I think the guy at Crank is a lovely person. But do they bring in outside money and lock it in his TVL? That's that's what we need in Kadena. And we need $4 million a month to balance this balance the force to balance. That's why I was telling you, right? We're going to balance the force like the dark side of the light. You know, you may sound, that might sound like a childish example, but that's the problem. And if that problem isn't solved or taken seriously by Mike and Carl, yeah, just balance it. And then the Kadena team has all types of runway, right? So if we build a casino and our casino feeds back into the ecosystem, there's no, there's no company. There's no token. There's nothing to extract. It's 100% back into Kadena and the King Pool locks in the TVL. So if we build this thing, we lock it in the TVL. What does that do for Kadena? It just makes Kadena great again. And then the team has lots of runway for their long term because it takes them 24, 96 months to, <laughs> to do anything. Right? So we really need this type of attitude in, in the community. We need the community to say, Kadena, no. Okay. You know, like you don't know everything. They're good, they're smart, they're, they're capable, they know a lot, way more than any of us. But Jesus, you know, we can help. We can help if you just let us, if you share a little bit, you know, or share with a mirror. If you don't like us and you KDA bet, go to hell, give a mirror some money so that he can do something. Like, and don't be cheap. Give him 100K a month. You know, 1.2 million a year, what could a mirror build? I bet you could build something pretty special on the demand side. Give somebody something because Crank, Unit, uh, Idea Soft, these guys aren't going to bring in, they're building facilities. They're not bringing in TBL to lock in and to balance the force. And so that's what's going on with Kadena. Kadena team might not like that. Mike might not like that. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's what's going on. And so I'll end my rant there because it's too much Kadena. We should be working on our thing, you know. I think. So even if Kadena goes to zero and we, we die, at least we'll have this software I could share some value with the kings. Because that's what I'm going to do if Kadena doesn't doesn't smarten up. we, we got to take this software somewhere where we, we can make some money, right? So I have to kind of build in these ways to share to ensure that there's a trustless way to share the value with you guys. Um, and so, you know, it's a struggle. And so I hope that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm spending more time ranting than coding, which is probably a bad thing.
it's on my mind, guys. I'll just let you know that. Anyways, so good success here. We have all of our models uh, setting up. Now we want to spend some time fixing the, the indexing, with the training models. So what we have to do is we have to go to So this is the training model module. This is just a, a methodology to go ahead and get the, the pitches and stuff. And so it's particularly two functions in the function. So this is just an API to the functional core. Um, so we separate the ability to access the database from uh, any particular surface area or surface source that can touch a, um, an impure function. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go to the core and look at our critical functions because here we're getting historical data to build the training set, right? Build your training set over historical data, things that happened. And so we need to look at, So get at bats is pretty much the thing that we're doing here. And we, we are we're getting at bats by ordering by the GID. So we're connecting things up by the GID. So we need to index things by, so indexing in a database just organizes the keys so that they're quickly accessible. And they're quickly joinable too. And so we have, you know, some pairs that we have to look at here. Okay. And so here we're going to go ahead and try to check and fix things up. So I think it's Postgres. Check the indexes and see if they're, they're all built. I think I hand built them before, which Brad, I should never have done. I should always do that in the migration, right? So you can, uh, you can write some admonishment in the yeah, I know. Don't don't shoot me in the office, okay? We got to get an office. Maybe we were so poor that we have to get an office in a trailer somewhere. How about that? Because Kadena price is killing us. We got a trailer, a trailer in uh, let's see, in Burns Bog. How about that? <laughs> trailer. Not even like a. Red for real landlord, yeah, okay. No, I want a, I want a train car, an off, a train car, and convert that into an office. Caboose. <laughs> cool. I like that. Uh, we'll just buy a, a rusted out beater and turn it into an office. Use the car's battery as a power for the computer. Use Starbucks, how about that? Okay, so what am I doing here? So I want to connect to the core repo. <laughs> McDonald's, work out at McDonald's. That's so crypto. <laughs> I like that. Okay, uh, so what we want to do here is we want to take a look at our at bats. So you can see here we have an index across JID and ABID which is good. And I'm just looking at all the indexes that we built. So I guess we did build somebody, but we do not have any indexes over the pitches, which is the bad news. So that's probably what's taking so long because the way that we access things is we get all the at-bats and all the pitches and the at-bats and we concatenate it all. Um, We concatenate it all. So what pitches? Yeah. Get at that pitches where we need GID and a BID index. And GID and PID index, I think. So 
Get at bat pitches, get game pitches. So the very first thing we can do to speed things up, I think, is add an index. So I believe we can go create index, yeah. Okay, I forget though, like I just don't remember. I used to when I was 20, I remember everything. That's how I got like 99 in all my math exams. Perfect memory. The professor is so lazy, he would just say, write the proof down. Okay, I just memorized that. <laughs> University is such a scam. Um, those who can't remember suffer. It's terrible. I feel bad for them. Okay. Create index. Right, so we want to create index and we're going to call this let's call this uh, wait, do we have an index? No, we don't. So create index pitches GID ABID index on pitches GID ABI. Yeah. So that's creating an index on the game ID and the abat ID, and we're calling it that. Whoops. No, oh, we made a mistake there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brad. <laughs> I'm old and I'm tired. Done. So you can now. It seems to be. Yeah, there it is. So there's GID and a BID, so we're just creating these individu individual indexes, right? So that should ought to speed things up a fair deal. Let's see if it does. So the first time, it's going to go ahead and create those sets. I can hear my computer whirring. faster now. So that's not the bottleneck. Okay, and then it's like a conveyor belt of of checks. Okay, so we need to getting at that pitches last in at bats. Okay, we're just checking things over is all. It's just mostly get last end batters faced. Get last end batters faced. So at bats can also be collected by the team. Get last end at bats. So I want to organize by start time, PID and start time. Okay, so we're going to try that. And then the relief. So there's a lot of little tricky database calls that we have to make. This one is done by pitcher ID. This is done by the team. So there's a lot of indexes we got to create here for at bats. We're just going to make things a little bit more efficient. 
Okay, so all we have is GID and ABID. So we're going to make a couple indexes here. So we're going to do team, start time, and is starter. Nice index, so that's that one taken care of. And then we want to just organize by the start time itself. These are just organization, different organizations, right? I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it, but to me it is. Just individual indexes for each case. So that's the start time. So in case of uh, having to create random random batters, and then PID and start time needs to be done. So by the player itself, which is the starter. So in the starter, you grab for a particular batter. PID should exist, should it? Uh, oh, picture ID, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. So that's a, another index made. So this, this should just speed up the access a lot. Just to give it a less burden, computational burden. Okay, here we have the same thing, start time. P, batter ID and start time we need as well. Okay, just a few few extra indexes there. So you should be able to see them now by D at bat, D plus at bats, and then you see here's all the indexes we made. So that, that just gives nice oh, something wrong there. It just gives a nice uh, a nice indexing to take a little stress off of the database calls because we're making a whole bunch at once, right? So we want those to be super quick. Yeah, it's nice now. I can already hear my computer whirring less. <laughs> Super, and so great. And so what's happening now is we're getting the data probably just a little bit more efficiently, which is nice, a little less stress on the system. Uh, that should actually speed up our time from 25 seconds for 1,000 to about 24, I bet. Probably that takes a second right off the time, which is nice. If you were with us uh, three episodes ago. And we go ahead and we should be able to see, and we already saw all of the supervisors on, or all, all of the processes supervised on the model supervisor. But hey, good to see that again, right? Why not? We don't need to inspect the number of models anymore because we know that that's the case. So if the number of models is zero, go ahead and create them. And if it's not zero, just return an okay. Like we're not recomputing twice, right? We're not recomputing twice. And so uh, let's go ahead and see if uh, we can look at our dynamic supervisor. I'm excited. 
So we should ought to be able to look at the model supervisor now and see a bunch of processes. There they all are. So those are the individual machine learning models. Yeah, about 252 of them, right? Yeah, exactly. So each one of those guys is going to spin up five to 10 models each. So you're going to see thousands and thousands of individual machine learning models working in, a, in an orchestra all, all, all together as one. And so now what we want to do is we want to actually build those guys. We want to build those guys now. Okay. And we do that by, where am I here? I want the neural net now, right? This is, yeah. So now we're going to slam the computer with computations. And this is where things get expensive and difficult because you have to distribute this, right? This computation. We can keep it small for now at two models per shot, but we probably want 100 per shot. And that's going to require money. You know, we need money. I mean, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to spend what we have on on something on a, on a doomed platform. So we will try our best to get the, this one Oracle up, but we can't do this for every sport, right? Unless we get some, some outside money in or something like that. So we're going to try to put this on test net, just on baseball alone, which is why we choose, chose baseball instead. When it was apparent Cadena price was not going up, we're, we have to change our ambitions. We have to try to raise outside capital for this data science company, um, which it has a relationship with the Dow, right? Um, in terms of giving away its software for free, helping the Kings make some money. So um, here we are, and now we ought to be able to create these models, and they'll be they'll be put into a cache, right? So remember, last time we made a cache and. We put those models in the cache, and then we can reload them without recomputing them. We only want to make them once, right? So everything is there. Now we just need the cache code here so that we're making a disk-based Erlang term storage. So it, basically, we're making a file database right here in the application itself. Um, no third parties, right? It's just, it's very nice. Brad, you love debts, right? How much, you, you learned all about amnesia, right? One thing I could do is get you to make, eh, yeah, yeah, you know that very well. So it'd be really nice to take what we're doing and turn it into amnesia eventually. Because it, uh, it's just such a nice wrapper. Yeah, exactly. It's all just within Erlang itself. However, Postgres has its, uh, Postgres definitely has its advantages as well. You cannot deny that. Okay, and so what we need to do now is, yeah, 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 I agree. So we're gonna go ahead and, I think the cache is here, is it? Nope, so here, yeah. So the cache is a little, a little module that I wrote that allows us to start a supervised data cache in debts. So we open the file and then we can go ahead and get or put things in it. It's just a key value there. And then we, I made it a, a duplicate bag, right? Which is what we want. Okay. So let's go ahead and implement this cache so that we have a, a, uh, kind of a nice, clever little data store here that we can use. So I'm going to copy that into MLB model into the library. I'm going to go to MLB model into the library. And now you see we have cache. I'm going to change the name, of course. And this is the model cache. Is the model cache. Um, I'm going to call it live models. And we're going to go ahead and build this. So this gets built. And how does it get built? Well, in Elixir, what you do is you you 
you stick things on a registry, which is what you do. Okay, and so we have a supervisor, like so. We have our registries, we have our, our dynamic supervisors, we have our Gen, we have our global gen server, which is going to hold the end result in it. Now we need a cache. Give me the cache. Me, do you guys know that? Give me the cache. Thumbs up if you know that. Give me the cache. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know. Yeah, I'll throw it in. Uh, one of the best movie scenes ever made. Give me the cash. I used to love that. Okay. Now, what was I doing? <laughs> Sorry, I get distracted by memes a lot. Uh, okay, so what I want to do is I just want to grab from Sim again. Give me the cash. No, give me the cash is way better, dude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> give me cash. Okay, MLB Sim. That's just my opinion, Oliver. I'm a fifth element guy. MLB Sim. No, supervisors is what you need. Right? We're just going to copy. So here you see, uh, here's the, the supervision. So basically the supervisor will watch over this process and so you see here we have id cache start the cache the cache start link and then we do something called a duplicate bag so each key can hold many models because remember each model for each picture versus or for each batter needs to have many models done because we're building an ensemble each little model has a little different slice of data therefore it gives a different result and by combining the different results together into one, you get a nice range of where those results could end up, depending on the data. But then you get a, you know, an average prediction. We call that an ensemble. And the ensemble is much more powerful than an individual prediction alone, because an individual prediction can overfit, right? So to combat overfitting, we do something called the bootstrap or the statistical bootstrap. And that's all a statistical bootstrap is: is that you have data, you cut up, cut up the data, you sample the data, and by sampling the data, you get just little, you know, you get little different outputs. And by averaging over those outputs, you actually get the strongest prediction of all. So that you should always do that in machine learning. So Olibero, I know you work with Timpy. So if Timpy wants to do good machine learning, they ought to, they ought to pay attention to ensemble methods and statistical bootstraps, very important for robust predictions. We want error bars, not singular predictions. We want ranges, not points. This is a good way to, good way to say that. Okay. Michael I. Jordan might give you a phone call if you say that. It's like oh, the Michael Jordan of, <laughs> his name's Michael I. Jordan. It's the Michael Jordan of machine learning. He hates it when you say that at conferences. Yeah, he's way above me though. Um, I'm just some loser on Kubina. He's a real, real scientist. Okay, so everything's working here. Everything's good. Turn that off. And now what we want to do is we want to initialize our cache. Okay, what was that again? I wanted to. Okay, I don't need to be in the core anymore. And already see the software is quite complex now. And, but thankfully we're reaching the end, which is such a relief. But we're going to set up our our little custom database here. Uh, what, what what happened there? Can I just grab you please? Thank you. Yeah, there we go. And now Little bit of magic. We have a model cache just for our live models now. Cool. 
super cool. So now what we can do is we can try to build the machine learning models, all of them. Let's see if we have a finished product, guys. This is exciting. What's the probability that I get a big red error? Probably 99.9%, .9%, right? Probably 99.9. .9. That has to be live models. Okay, that's putting into the cache, and then we have a, I think we're getting from the cache as well, right? Oh my God, man, you guys should have seen what I had to do to speed up the predictions. Oh my goodness. This is my prediction function. It's all types of nonsense I had to do to uh, it's probably $5,000 piece of code right there. Okay, we are putting, but sometimes I want to get the models. There it is. Yeah, there it is. That's that has to be live models. So I think that might work. Let's see. Oh, no P funk? Yeah. Uh, why isn't that defined? It's right. Oh yeah. Do we not have MLB model dot cache? Let's we better go check, you know. It doesn't hurt to check, right? I think we do. It would be model dot model the cache. We model dot no that's uh that's oops, I think we got it mixed around here, so That's MLB model, right? But we went into sim from there. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. It's MLB model dot cash. MLB model dot model dot cash, right? Oh, I know it's wrong. <laughs> the alias has to be right, and then we can. Do that. Where is my little loader? And then cache should load up properly. And therefore, our error should disappear. It did. Uh, everything looks sound. So let's see. I'll probably get an error. But this is exciting. This is exciting. Are we going to get machine learning? Let's see. Yep. There we go. Now it's going to compute 252 of these badasses. So how to speed that up? It still seems sequential. Okay, so we st it seems like a su still an eager, it's not concurrent. It should be, yeah, let's just see what the computer's doing. Yeah, it's not concurrent for some reason. But it's doing it. Okay, so we'll just wait it out and then, and then we'll check debts to see if all of the uh, models are there. It's going to take a while. That's why we need a distributed system to sort of.
Looks like Cadena's going down to 1.13. Oh my god. I'm in trouble, guys. Fuck. I just won't do anything to help the price. Yeah, we're in trouble. I don't know how feasible it is to stay on Cadena some days. Like, it's just prices down to 1.36. It's just it's getting destroyed. Man, sorry guys. It's just uh, very stressful right now. Sorry, it just takes forever to compute things. It's not concurrent, which is strange because it should be, but maybe. Maybe it's an issue to solve after this live cast. Again, it's just a neat process of making things efficient. There's a lot of mod. I mean, 252 is quite a lot. To I mean, they're pretty fast individually, right? But there's no reason why we can't spread that over the CPUs. And so what we're seeing here is the CPUs are not all getting used. I have a pretty good processor, a pretty modern one, i9-23 three core, but you can see the memory is very efficient. So we're not doing any data copying, which is nice. And so just be nice if this was all just balls out to 100% on every CPU just to crank through this as fast as possible. But it seems to like still be sequential. So I just have to figure out where the flaw in the code is. I wonder, am I looping? I hope I'm not looping. It'd be taking a long time. I don't know. Uh, I feel that should be about 250. Maybe, maybe I'll wait just a little bit longer. like okay what I can do is I can stop the process okay let's just see what just happens because okay. I think that's probably probably an internal loop that's happening rather than a, a stopping 
which is fine. Uh, we can figure it out. So what I want to do is I want to, okay, we got to think here. I want to go to the, no, that's the machine learning model. Uh, I need the simulator. Nope, not that one. And not you. I need the MLB sim. Remember, it's a massive onion, right? So the way we describe this thing. So I want to not do this. Because I'm going to go ahead and check debts. Debts dot. Uh, Maybe I could just select all keys. Okay, so that's dot select. It's a uh, kind of like Cadena select actually. Yeah, same type of. Are you loading yet? Okay, no, no, it's continuously loading now. Yeah, that's right. So, unless I build a model, unless I build a model, it keeps looping. And, okay, so what we want to do is, right. So it's quite complex, okay? So, yeah, that's what we want to do. Let's just take everything away so that there's no computational burden because we just want to look at I just want to look at things, what's going on here. Can I select that? I, th I think that should be work. Wait, where is my... Oh yeah, I got to select from the table that I want to grab it from, right? So, pardon me. Uh, live models, right? Yeah, so that should get keys. There's no keys, so nothing was getting written. Interesting. Very interesting. There's nothing in there. Okay. Nothing was getting written, so that's why I was writing over and over and over. I see. Can I count? Can I... Yeah, there's live models, and then I want to... Yeah, there's nothing in there. So what was happening? We have to decipher it. See, see it's not so easy, right? To... So I was trying to get from the cache here. And then I put it there. Right, okay, interesting. Train the models, for each of the models, build a predict function, put it in live models, store it. Nothing got stored for some reason. So I'm just wondering if I can inspect this 
see what's going on when we when we play this game. Okay. Okay, that's the sim, and so. Okay, so that should do the deed there. Okay, so can we actually see this? So this might return like just an empty nothing. So let's see if we even get here. So let's let's inspect out Adam Cadena. See if we can get to that point of putting the model into the putting the model into the database, right? Or are we making a mistake? Oh, no, okay, it's working. Okay, so that means that... The debt system ought to be... Oh, it's not getting made. No, live models is there. No, it's there. Interesting. Um, okay. So it said okay. It said it was written. It said it was written. So I don't know why that wouldn't be. Okay, we've got to probably test things like manually just to see if things work. You see, it's not so easy. We're super close now, though. This is good. Today is a good day to die. So we're just going to take out that stuff so that it doesn't loop. And then we're going to see, again, probably nothing got saved in the database. That's dot lookup. Or that's dot select. Live models. So there's nothing in there. Nothing's getting written. So can we, in fact, insert something into it? So the way you do that is you just go getting written. Okay, so that makes sense. At least from what's going wrong. So we're trying to just the storage of the models now is fucking up. Right, that's exactly what should be happening here. That's dot insert table name key values live models so what so oh so the select doesn't this is a bad select query i see I see. Um, so I wonder, I don't know how to do this. So that's get all keys. That's what I really want to do. That's what I want. Okay, so I want to.
let's try to get some information. I'm just trying to remember how to use all this. It's just not so fresh in my brain. Oh, there's 500. Oh, there's just one key in it. One. Right, how do I get all the keys in there? Oh well. It's already probably over long today. So you can see like we're right there now. So we're right at the point where we're actually computing machine learning models concurrently in live games. So that's great. All we have to do is make sure that that's efficient now so that we're actually saving that to like a little storage database and then grabbing that. Like, so there's just a lot of little grunt work I don't want to bore you guys with. But you can see we're like right there. And so the next step after this is to make that into a uh, distributed service on EC2 with an API, and then the API can be used to feed an Oracle. And so we're going to have our odds cycling as an Oracle on Kadena. That will be a proof of concept. We'll connect that then to Kadena bets to the demo here so that these odds are actually coming on chain. And so we can say we have on chain odds, and then we can do the betting and test net. And then that, that full that full on-chain experience on testnet should be enough for us to start talking to uh, prospective capital source so that we can solve the capital problem for KDA bet. As, as noted, um, we're close now, yeah. As noted, KDA is not going anywhere but down. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. So we'll end it there and I'll upload that to YouTube and uh, hopefully hopefully we can get something done here on Kadena, guys. I'm just trying our hardest, but it's not helpful. Uh, not helpful lately with the price, but we'll try our best. Okay, so I continue on and just keep slugging away. Okay, talk soon.